What's up guys? Ashley here and I am back with another video here to show you how I created my DIY brick wall. So first I wanted to give a huge shout out to Old Mill Brick for sending over these brick singles. I really love this product because it's not the original size of a regular brick, but it's about one third the size, making it so much easier to work with. Again, this was my first brick project, so it was super simple to tackle, and I'm super excited to show you guys how I created it. So once I got my design all mapped out, I started bricking my wall. So as you can see, I'm starting at the top, and I'm going vertical. I'm going to do about nine rows of the vertical brick singles, and as you can see, I'm just placing them on the wall. So if you're wondering how I'm attaching the brick to the wall, I'm super excited to share this with you. Now usually during brick projects you'll see people using mortar to attach to the wall, but I decided not to go that route just because it takes a long time for it to dry and this was already a big project, my arms were already hurting, so I decided to use this Loctite Power Grip Adhesive. Now this stuff is just as good as mortar, as soon as you put the brick on the wall it sticks, but you also have around 10 minutes before it cures all the way. So I loved using this because I could just put the bricks up and they just held in place. You know, if I needed to move them around a little bit, I could do that as well. But this stuff works wonders and as you can see, or as you will see, it turned out great. So in order to get the correct spacing in between my bricks, I'm just using a little wooden 3 8 inch dowel. Now I cut a couple of these dowels up during the project just to use, you know, for the spacing and this was the perfect way to go. I can't think of an easier way to get that correct spacing. So if you want your brick to kind of look like mine, go get that dowel. Now you may also see me using a level. Now this was the most important part because you want your bricks to be level, especially when you apply the grout. You'll definitely see any imperfections within the brick. So as you can see, I'm using the level on each brick to make sure that it's leveled out. Now, once I finish the top with the horizontal pattern, I switched the design up after about nine rows and I started laying bricks horizontally. Now, here I'm just using the same technique. I'm using that power grip adhesive to apply the bricks to the wall and I'm using that dowel to get the correct spacing. Now here, you're gonna need a couple of dowels here again. You might wanna cut some long ones, some short ones, just so you can, you know, move quickly through the process. Now, I'm doing this project by myself, as you can see, but if you can find some helping hands, it will definitely come in handy. Um, after about, you know, a couple lines of brick, I was kind of getting tired. So this was an extensive project, definitely not something that I can knock out in a day, but with help, I'm sure you can get yours done. Once I got that vertical pattern all laid out, it was time for the next pattern, which is the herringbone pattern. I was super excited about this one because I knew this was the pattern that was gonna really bring the wall together. So as you can see, I'm starting to lay the herringbone. And for this pattern, I'm using a laser level. Now my friends, if you don't have this for this project, I would definitely, definitely recommend getting this. This definitely allowed me to lay the herringbone pattern straight. Um, with this brick wall, it's easy to kind of get the bricks off level, off square. So this laser level basically shined two lights, vertical and horizontal, and it just allowed me to lay the herringbone pattern straight on the wall. And it made it so much easier. It's funny because a lot of people were saying, man, the herringbone part looked really hard, but it was actually the easiest part, which sounds crazy, I know, but it was. So basically, I just did the herringbone pattern line by line using that laser level and using those small little wooden dowels again to get the correct spacing. And man, does it look so good. Now, I decided to lay all of the full bricks on the herringbone pattern first and then go back and then fill in the cracks. I feel like this was the best way just so I can see how the pattern was gonna be. Now, to cut the little pieces to fit in the herringbone pattern, I'm actually using my tile saw, which this was the first time me using a tile saw, you guys. So this was like, you know, just the first all around, which is so crazy. So I'm hoping that I'm inspiring you guys to feel like maybe you can't do it, that you can, because this was my first time and it came out great. Now, even though the herringbone was the easiest, it was the biggest chunk of pattern, so it did take the longest. 
But after I was done, I basically just repeated the same steps. I did another vertical row and another horizontal row and that was the end to my wall. So one thing you may be wondering is how I handled the outlets and laying the brick around them. Now, I know for me, every time someone talks about electrical and outlets, I'm like, uh-uh, no way. I don't wanna touch it because I don't wanna get electrocuted. So don't be scared, it's not that hard, it's really easy. The one thing you must remember though when you're working with outlets is to make sure you turn off the power because you don't want to risk getting electrocuted or getting a little you know, so we don't want that. So basically, I just went to my power panel, I turned off the electricity to my bedroom so I could place the bricks around the outlet. So basically, all you're gonna do is pop that outlet off and you're gonna lay the brick around the outlet. And I use these little spacers, which basically just allows the outlet to come out from the wall so that you can place the behind it. It's really super simple. I'm showing you here how I'm tackling that. But yeah, this just makes it look so much better. You don't wanna lay the brick and then have the outlet into it because it's just not gonna look good. Now, once I had the brick all laid, which, man, let me tell you, I was so excited to get all those bricks done. Just the fact that I laid all these single bricks on the wall was just a job in and of itself, and I was super excited, but it's only part one, so I have a whole nother phase to do, which is grouting the brick, so let's get into that. So I decided to go with a sanded grout. It was really easy to work with, and I had seen a couple of other people use it, so I just decided that it was the best way to go. Now, originally, I was going to do a antique white color, and I tried it out on my wall, but it just didn't look the way I wanted to, so I decided to try two other colors, platinum and bright white, and those two colors still weren't working. So finally, I just decided to mix my own color. So I mixed two grout colors together to get this color on my wall and I was super excited when I saw it because I was like, yes, this is the right color. So if you can't find the right grout color and you're doing a brick project, sometimes you just have to make your own, man. So that's what I did. So basically, I just mixed the two grouts 50-50, just making sure that I got an equal amount of both to get the color that I wanted. Now, after doing the grouting process a couple of times, I kind of got into a little routine. Because I'm doing the grout by myself, I had to make sure that I only mixed enough grout to cover enough space to where it wouldn't dry on me. Originally, I mixed a whole bag of grout and I quickly learned that that was a bad idea because by the time I was done grouting the wall and fixing it up, I went back and the grout was dry. So if you're doing this project by yourself, make sure that you're only mixing enough to do certain sections of the wall so that grout does not dry on you. So as you can see, I'm using about six cups of grout, three for each. And that was about enough to cover the wall enough where I could put it on the wall and smooth it out. So here I'm just using a regular mixing bowl and a kitchen spoon. Yeah, I know, crazy. But this was the way that was easy for me to mix the grout up to a consistency that I want. So here all I'm doing is adding water to get that consistency that I want. Now you want the grout to be thick enough to where it's kind of like a peanut buttery or like a windy frosty enough where it's not too thick but it's not too watery. So I'm just mixing that in here. Once I get the consistency to what I want, I let the grout sit for about 10 minutes. This will let the grout kind of cure. You know, it will thicken up a little bit, but once you mix it again, it'll loosen it up a little bit. Now, once you have that grout sit for about 10 minutes, I just mix it up again, you know, to kind of swirl it around a little bit more and then I'm going to pour it into my grout bag. Now I'm going to rave about this grout bag because this thing was awesome. It's actually a reusable grout bag, it's vinyl. So each time that I put the grout in and I grout it my wall, I just rinse it out and I used it over and over and over. Um, I definitely like using this versus using like, you know, throwaway grout bags just because it was great to use, it was the right size, and it was only like seven bucks, so you can't beat it. <laughs> now, I will say, if you're going to use this reusable grout bag, make sure that you rinse it out every time that you use it. Um, in the beginning, I kept filling up the grout bag without rinsing it out, 
and there would be chunks of grout that would dry and it would sometimes make it hard for the grout to come out. So you don't want that to happen. So make sure that you just rinse that baby out every time you use it on your wall. So once I got the grout in the bag, basically this was the easy part. Kind of easy but kind of hard because my arms were on fire. Um, you basically just squeeze the grout in the holes in the lines of the brick. Now I found it easier to start from the bottom and work my way up when applying the grout, but when you're doing it, you'll find the way that works best for you. So I would just say try it out, and if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> now this is the part where extra hands would definitely come in handy. Unfortunately, I was rolling solo dolo, so I was kind of tackling it by myself. But I made sure to do it in sections just because I, I didn't want to tire myself out. Um, so I would do probably a couple sections a day. Um, if you had a partner, you can probably knock out way more in a day. Um, but I just didn't want to overwhelm myself. So it did take a couple of days for me to complete it. But I'm super happy with how it turned out. Now once you get that grout in there, you probably want to let it sit for about 5 to 10 minutes. Depending on how big of a section that you're doing. Um, so after my grout was in there and it was dried up just a bit, it was time to kind of shape and form it. So first I used a little trowel, which this was the perfect trowel because it's a 3 8 inch trowel. And as I told you, I used a 3 8 inch dowel for the spacing. So it was the perfect little trowel to kind of, you know, set the grout into place and lay it all out. So once I put the grout in, I used this trowel to kind of shape the grout and then I went back with a little bristle brush to kind of get all of the excess pieces off. Now, when you do this grouting, you want to make sure that you have plastic wrapped down because it will get messy. I mean, messy. So make sure that you have something down to catch all the excess grout. So once you know you wipe off that excess grout and you cover everything, you are basically done. Um, afterwards, I went down and wiped the wall off and I put a sealer on it just to seal all the brick. And that was it. I painted my walls of my bedroom. They were gray to white and it just made it look so much brighter. I put in my bed, thank God, because I've been sleeping on the couch for a couple of months to finish this project. And I staged it all and it looks so amazing, you guys. I am so excited with how my brick wall came out. I feel like it just brought my master bedroom to life. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. And I hope this video inspires you on your next brick project. All right, guys, later.